it's Cece, and welcome to If You Like That, Try This, Movie Edition. If You Like That, Try This is a series that I do where I recommend books to you based on a lot of different categories I have previously done, and If You Like That, Try This, Music Edition, I've also done a Disney Princess Edition, and there will be many, many more. But this is one of my favorite things to do. I love finding similarities between movies and books because I enjoy both so much, and I like the same types of stories, so when I can find a good, like, vibe or type of story that works in both movie and book form that really excites me. As per usual with these videos I have six fabulous books to recommend to you based on six wonderful movies so let's just jump right in. The first movie that I'm going to be talking about today is The Craft. This is an absolutely wonderful movie about witches in high school that has gained kind of a cult following and is overall just a great movie. It is about these three friends and then a new girl moves in and they're witches and they work on learning spells and honing their magic, but some stuff goes definitely wrong. If you really love the movie The Craft, which you should by the way, how many witch movies are there? But if you like that, then I highly recommend that you check out the book The Merciless by Danielle Vega. It's almost unfair to recommend this book based on the, the craft because it is sort of a combo of the craft and Mean Girls. It's That's how it was marketed. but. It's marketed that way for a reason. This is super similar to The Craft in a lot of great ways. The Merciless, much like The Craft, is about a new girl who moves into school and ends up making friends with these three girls who are already friends. And these three friends convince Sophia, the new girl, to do some stuff that she normally wouldn't do. And what they try to convince her of is that this other girl that they know, Brooklyn, is possessed and that they need to perform an exorcism. But when this exorcism begins to happen, Sophia begins to realize that this isn't just an exorcism, they are torturing this girl. This is a wonderfully dark book that is overall just an adventure to read. I thoroughly enjoy reading it and I would say I know very few people who when they start reading it, can like not finish it in one sitting. Once you sit down with this book, that's it. You're gonna finish it. It has a lot of elements of the craft, especially near the end. There are some very striking similarities and overall I just think that these two things go really well together. The next movie that I'm gonna talk about is Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy is a fantastic superhero movie that takes place in space. There are all kinds of fantastically weird aliens, there is a wonderful group of ragtag heroes to root for, and there is some kind of conflict going on. Not to mention the fact that it's a very, very funny movie. But if you really, really love Guardians of the Galaxy, then I highly encourage you to pick up Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Saga is a wonderful graphic novel series that I think has a lot of similarities to Guardians of the Galaxy. It has a couple of ragtag heroes in a leading role. It takes place in space and there are all kinds of alien creatures that you get to see. It's an adventure with a lot of heart. The way it looks is absolutely gorgeous and I just think that it's so good and people should read it. And if you haven't read it but you really really like Guardians of the Galaxy then I think that you'll love Saga. The next movie I'm going to talk about is Imagine Me and You. This is an absolutely fantastic movie and there need to be more like it. This movie basically follows a woman named Rachel on the day she is going to get married to a guy she thinks is the love of her life. But on her wedding day she happens to note the female florist Luce and she kind of starts to fall in love with her instead. I have never seen a movie with ladies loving ladies that has beat this one. It is just fantastic and I feel like I, I really just want to impress upon people that they should see this movie because it's funny, it's sweet, and Luce and Rachel are wonderful. Not to mention the fact that Luce is played by Lena Headey who plays Cersei in Game of Thrones which is weird but you get over it. Anyway, I am repeating a recommendation from my last If You Like That Try This video because I have to recommend based on this movie Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. Everything Leads to You at its core is a YA contemporary mystery. It takes place in Hollywood and there's a ton about set designing which is super interesting but the lead character Emmy is a lesbian and she does have a romance throughout this book which which is adorable and wonderful. These two things don't have a lot of similarities plot-wise, but I just think that they are two of the most shining examples of lesbian representation in media. I just love both of them. Each of the romances in this movie and this book are adorable. And whenever I say that I want more movies with queer ladies or I want more books with queer books, these are the two things that I go to for like the best versions that I've seen done. And I'm like, I want more 
movies like Imagine Me and You, and I want more books like Everything Leads to You. So that is why I have to recommend them together. If you've read Everything Leads to You and loved it, please watch Imagine Me and You. Anyway, both are wonderful. Please, please go look for both. The next movie that I'm going to talk about is Men in Black. Men in Black is a great movie about this covert organization who works to keep aliens on Earth in check. Us regular people can't know they're there, but they do the dirty work and they make sure that humans and aliens can live in harmony and there's a lot of fun along the way. If you really like all of these elements of Men in Black, then I highly recommend that you check out The Rook by Danielle O'Malley. This is such a good book that I feel like not nearly enough people have read. The Rook follows a girl named Miffany Thomas who wakes up and has no memory of who she is but soon discovers that she works for a similarly covert organization in London who works to keep supernatural monsters from killing the general population. Neither of these stories take themselves too seriously so they bring a lot of humor to the odd workplace meets monster fighting kind of environment that they both inhabit and they're both just fun. They just have so much fun with what they do, and The Rook is amazing, and the sequel, Stiletto, just barely came out after years of me waiting for it, and I can't wait to check it out, so I highly recommend, if you like Men in Black, to check out The Rook. The next movie I'm going to be talking about is actually my all-time favorite romantic comedy, and is in my top five of favorite movies of all time, and that is You've Got Mail. You've Got Mail is a romantic comedy starring Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks, who meet online and start emailing and fall in love there, and in real life they meet each other not knowing their online identities, and they really don't like each other. The romance overall is just a joy to watch, and it is such an ode to book lovers. Meg Ryan owns an independent bookstore, and she is just working on staying afloat, and she loves connecting with readers, and Tom Hanks is the owner of a huge corporation who owns like a Barnes and Noble-esque company with just a lot of bookstores and his bookstore is going right up the street from her little independent bookstore. Anyway, it's full of emails that they write to one another and it's cute and it's wonderful and if you really really like it, which you should, then you should really also check out 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. Much like You've Got Mail is all about sending emails back and forth, 84 Charing Cross Road is all about letters. This is a collection of real letters that was sent back and forth between Helene Hanf who lived in New York City and a bookseller in London who provided her books for her for 20 years. They sent letters back and forth to each other for the entire duration of this 20 years and wound up becoming really wonderful friends. It's a sweet book and it is an ode to loving literature just the way You've Got Mail is. And if you do check it out, then I highly recommend that you also pick up the second part, The Duchess of Bloomsbury, which is Helene Hant's um, diary later on. I think that those two are really good to read together. But anyway, if you love You've Got Mail, if it makes you feel happy and if it makes you feel connected, to reading and to books, then I know that you will really enjoy 84 Charing Cross Road. And the last movie that I'm going to be talking about is Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. This is originally a Broadway musical, and it basically, if you don't know the story of Sweeney Todd already, follows this guy named Sweeney Todd who moves back to London and decides he's going to take his revenge on this judge, and he winds up killing people in his barber shop and turning them into pies to sell in the pie shop down below, which is fantastic. It's a wonderful movie with some fabulously dark songs, but if you really love Sweeney Todd, then I highly recommend that you check out Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by Patrick Siskind. This book has been turned into a movie, but I will say that I think the book is better. It follows a boy named Jean-Baptiste, and he learns how to make perfume because he has this really extraordinary nose, he can smell anything, and so he decides that he's going to start turning girls into perfume because he wants to create the perfect scent. It's very, very strange. But the way that the book describes scents and the way that it focuses so much more on this scent that usually isn't used in description in books is so fascinating and the lead character is interesting. Basically, these two lead characters kill people. Sweeney Todd through unconventional means and Jean-Baptiste for unconventional reasons. And if you like either of these stories, then I highly recommend that you check the other out because they are both wonderful. Okay guys, there you go. That was my If You Like That Try This movie edition, and hey, wanna throw in a couple of freebies as usual. If you really like Birdman, then I highly recommend that you check out You by Caroline Kepnes, both featured male characters that I didn't care about and got a lot of hype that I'll never understand. And if you really like the movie Her, then you should check out Ready Player One, which features a lead character who is possibly 
too invested in electronics. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my recommendations. If there are movies and books that you connect in your head, please leave them down below. I would love to hear about them. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!